I've already done a video once on this 1996 Chevy Suburban LT 4x4, but the first time I did the video was at a, as a curator, taking care of this for a good friend of mine. And in a strange twist, about uh, two weeks ago now, I got a phone call and said, hey, meet me for breakfast. And I left that breakfast as the owner of this 1996 Chevy Suburban LT 4x4. I decided to make a video about why I think 90s, particularly pickup trucks, are the collectibles of the future. My name is Jason, and this is Grease Belly Garage, and this is Chick-fil-A Sweet Tea. Well, before we get started, I guess I should inform everybody the Dodge Durango in the background is also now mine, and I got my 2001 Power Stroke Diesel Excursion 4x4 back from the diesel mechanic yesterday. I've got a mass and variable conocopia of SUVs around here. I guess all I need is a Suzuki Samurai, and I'll have the whole kit and caboodle. Can you see me? Can you see me? Back in the 90s, there was very few cars that really caught anybody's attention from a car guy's perspective these days that I've noticed, this is all my opinion, okay? But I can't think of any 90s American cars that I'd actually want to buy, maybe just a handful. Most of them are rear wheel drive, like uh, Corvettes, Vipers, got a lot of German cars, Mercedes, BMW, and some Japanese stuff. For trucks, though, there's all kinds of choices in the 90s. You got Toyota Tacomas, the Nissan trucks were good then. The American stuff was fantastic in my book. This is a GMT 400 body style Suburban. They call them OBS now, the young guys do. You got square bodies and you got OBS. Square bodies are the older ones, 73 to 87. Now this particular GMT 400 not only is it really nice, it's a good color, it's in really, really well kept original condition. It was factory ordered by one of my best friend's father. His father specifically ordered this Suburban in a very particular way. Possibly the way that this is equipped would work for law enforcement like an FBI, like the Suburban you saw on Speed, the Keanu Reeves movie, that kind of thing. But those were usually stripped down models. This is a top of the line LT, but it was ordered with a third seat delete. This will be in my hands as long as I can take care of it. Unless I get a wild hair at my butt and decide to sell it, which you never know, that's been known to happen too. So let's go over a few things about these 90s trucks that make them so incredibly desirable to Guys in my age group, Gen Xers, we remember these from growing up with them. I didn't think much of these trucks at all when I was a young man, but now this thing is mesmerizing to me. Let's go over some reasons why I think these are going to skyrocket to the moon. Uh-oh, got a bent antenna here. Some of the best things about these GMT 400 Suburbans to me is the exterior styling because they still retain a lot of the heritage of the Chevy trucks from the previous decades, such as this slightly squared off wheel opening, and just the overall stance, the greenhouse proportions, the front end, it just still retains all of that, but it's got all the greatness of a 90s vehicle, which is cruise control, air conditioning that actually works, power windows that are pretty reliable and quick, lights that you can actually see with and uh, windshield wipers that go fast enough to get the rain off the window. So to me, these are some of the most livable vehicles you can get from the 90s. Pretty much any of these American ones. Ford Broncos, OBS Ford trucks, GMT 400 trucks, Suburbans, GMC of course. And uh, the Dodge trucks of that era are pretty good too except the dashes fell apart. 
you can go on Marketplace and buy just about any kind of wheels you want for these things. They're all the same six lug pattern on a four wheel drive, five on a two wheel drive. There's all kinds of accessories to get. It's cheap, the thing's easy to fix, and it just looks good. It's got that classic Tony Soprano look that I used to hate, and now I love it. I love seeing these things in really good shape. Me and this camera are gonna have a fight before it's over with. Okay, the interior of these trucks. I mean, it's simple and elegant at the same time, and this is all original. Okay, so GM plastics in the 90s left a lot to be desired, but when you take care of it, it holds up just as good as almost any other thing. It's got the push button transfer case instead of the one with the lever on the floor, and I think that was an upgrade for the higher trim levels. And Oopsie. Remember what I said about GM plastics in the 90s? There it went. It was just, it was just a little cockeyed. That's all. Okay, get in there. Get in there. Well, that's embarrassing. Something is not cooperating here. Let's try this again. Put you there. Put you there. Well, I guess there's going to be an entire episode of Grease Belly Garage devoted to installing a glove box into a GMT 400. So we're just going to we're just going to leave it like that. I think this here is a flip over notepad. Here's the bag of. GM interior parts, which includes a ashtray lid, ashtray I said, and a seat adjuster lever. But the seats in this thing are dynamite. I used to think they were really gaudy when I was in my early 20s when these trucks were new. I looked at them and I thought, man, that looks like an old Lazy Boy recliner. Now I'm glad that it's a Lazy Boy recliner. And I'm going to get some proper... Husky liner mats or something for the interior as well. Yeah, you push this forward to get into the third row. But guess what? There is no third row. Oh, let's see if we can convert this seat into cargo area. Do that again. Pull this out. And I guess this goes right here. There's a few key things to look for when you're buying a car anywhere that you can look at in pictures that tell you whether it's a good one or not. One of them is these cargo nets or pockets on the back of the front seats aren't stretched out like somebody tried to cram me in there. They're in good shape, they're still taut. So that means that there was no kids riding back here shoving soccer balls at them or whatever. Now we'll take this, I guess push it, and it folds down like that, there we go. And then this, cardboard duber on the back. I don't think this thing has ever been flipped over, by the way. There we go. Makes a nice, almost perfectly flat load floor all the way up to here. And I think that's about eight feet. Big enough for a sheet of drywall or plywood, whatever. Obligatory armrest here in the middle. With a Kleenex holder. A lot of people on YouTube don't even know what this is. This is for a travel box of Kleenexes. Slides right in there and you can pull them, pull them out and you know dig your boogers or clean your glasses or whatever you need to do. At every stoplight I see people picking their noses here in Florida so maybe the Kleenex fad is long gone. There's the one broken ashtray door that I have in storage and this just happens to be right there is the broken seat latch plastic, but I'm an expert on fixing plastic now with, you know, super glue and zip ties and whatnot. Another buying tip for you. Whenever you see a vehicle in the pictures that have Michelin tires, I can almost promise you it's a good car to buy. Michelin tires, and then if you pop open the gas cap, the ones that have a door that you can pop open that have an actual gas cap, if it's nice and clean in there, you probably got yourself 
a really good rig. The plastic headlights aren't yellow, they're still fairly clear, and it doesn't look like it's sat outside. Every time I bought a car with Michelin tires, it's always turned out way better than I expected, so put that one in your pocket. Okay, fold this over out of the way. This plastic cover here says dealer cover, dealer must remove. That's the way this truck was delivered back in 1996. And it's been there ever since. 28 year old plastic. And quite frankly, I'm kind of afraid to remove it. There's no telling how much of the carpet fibers will come off with it. There are absolutely no provisions in the floor for a third seat whatsoever and in the top you can see that there's some caps for the seat belt the three-point seat belts this was built with a third seat delete from the factory as an lt and i don't think it may be the only one ever that i know of kind of doesn't even make any sense but that's what we got here Okay, I had to pretty much immediately put an alternator in this, and you're gonna notice this air compressor kick on and off rather rapidly, and it has a refrigerant leak somewhere. So in a future episode, we'll be doing some AC stop leak in this, regardless of what the professionals think about it. I love the stuff. And by the way, I did HVAC, residential HVAC for more than 20 years. So, I know my stuff too. This is a Vortec 350. I'm pretty sure the water pumps run backwards from the old small block version. It's got a distributorless ignition system, but it's got a distributor that goes in the back, which I think just houses like a cam sensor or something. It's not really a distributor, no rotor. Basically just a coil pack that looks kind of like looks kind of like this and you see that looks something like that we got ABS we got airbags in this thing you know it starts in the cold weather you don't have to mess with a carburetor every once in a while these intake gaskets will give you a fit sometimes the injectors will but it's not a hard fix a lot of mechanics know how to do it a lot of do-it-yourselfers can do it no problem I don't even think this car has a body control module you don't get all those weird electrical gremlins in these or cluster failures or any of that stuff. These are just all around really good, solid Chevy pickups if you want a classic vehicle that's easy on the wallet. Of course, they're not going to be for long, but they're easy to maintain. You can still do it yourself, and you can still drive at 100 miles an hour all the way to Seattle if you want to without much trouble. And I just realized I did that entire segment with that annoying key thing. I don't know why I never hear that, but sorry guys, you got to give me a pass on it. But this thing does fire right up. There you go. This fires right up every time. Can't beat a Chevy. Okay. So that'll give you something to look forward to for you OBS guys. But this thing does fire right up. There you go. This fires right up every time. Can't beat a Chevy. Okay, that'll give you something to look forward to for you OBS guys. Okay, fun seekers. I just wanted to get that video clicked in before I put that thing away for just a short time. I gotta start working on this dreadful Mercedes 380 SL pretty soon. And I got a bunch of junk to clean up from my trip to Tennessee still. So look for the OBS in the future. I'm gonna try to put a better pace on some of my videos. I gotta get some of this stuff sold off, and the only way I'm gonna do it is to get it done. I'm not selling the OBS, not for sale, it's for me. So, in the meantime, I appreciate you guys watching. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Give me a thumbs up anyway if you don't like the video. Uh, just to help me in the algorithm a little bit so more people can see the cars. I don't care about me, but the cars would be nice. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. See you next time. Right. Tune in again. Thanks for watching. Yep.